Mitchell. Quarterback Rakeem Cato returns to his hometown to take on the Florida International Golden Panthers. FIU head coach Ron Turner is preaching patience, and they try and shut down the high-octane thundering herd offense. Marshall has their sights set on an East Division crown, but they need a win today to keep pace with East Carolina. It's Marshall and Florida International next. It's the 7-3 thundering herd from Marshall taking on the FIU Panthers. It is the freshman Amaretto Curry to kick things off. And we are underway in Miami. And this one will head down towards the back of the end zone and no reason to take this one out. He's the most uh, dynamic guy they have on defense. Hillier two for two for 33 yards, but he got hit and threw one up in the air. Drops incomplete their sideline. You're going to see a blitz come from the backside, and nobody picks him up. They do a good job disguising the blitz. Tyndall sits there on the edge. Nobody understands. Nobody communicates. And that ball may have come free before he threw it, but that hit was right down, as you said, in the back. as a tough handoff or a tough... Uh, snap there was handled well and given to Lamar Caldwell before he ran into Alex Bazzi. It's just unbelievable to watch him to watch him play now as he gets older with every game, more experienced, understands exactly where to go with the football. And he took his time finding his tight end Gator Hoskins, who is out for 14 off the first play from scrimmage. One of the big problems for Hilliard is he struggles to pull the trigger. He's been sacked a ton, 20 times in eight games and a lot of that is because he doesn't get rid of the football and he tried to get rid of it there but he can't do it down he goes and aj hilliard sacked for a loss of two well you're gonna see a, a blitzing evan mckelvey and that just enough takes his eyes off down the field and steve dillon comes wrapping around nobody there to block him great execution on the back end and the coverage aspect of it but the blitz was executed perfectly They will give it to Caldwell, but he could not get out of the backfield. Wrapped up and brought down by James Rouse for a loss of two. You can see James Rouse just split the, the offensive lineman. There's nobody there. He's third and nine for Cato, and he had to throw in a hurry, and he's got a man over the middle. Complete to Devin Johnson across midfield. Take a look at that completion again to Johnson. You can see the pressure in his face. Does a great job of using his feet, buying some time. And there is a lot of emotion here. It is senior night for these FIU players. 13 of them playing in their final home game as they give this one to Kevin Grooms, who has speed into the open field. He lost his footing. After he crossed the 35-yard line, he went tumbling down 14 yards. But boy, was he in a hurry. We're going to watch the defensive end over here just come jetting up field. It's an easy block for that, that offensive tackle. And look at the void. There's just nobody there. 26 kind of come into play. It's a mismatch nightmare. A big tight end, 6'2", 244. Made on a pass. Over the middle. Hoskins for the touchdown. 25-yard strike to the tight end, Gator Hoskins. That's his 10th touchdown catch of the season. He was 10th in all of FBS coming into play today. And he lines up at the number three position, which is asking a linebacker or a strong safety to come down in the box. The handoff to Silas Spearman is blown up by Alex Bazzi. The red shirt senior out of Silver Spring, Maryland, a two-yard loss. A Miami native. He'll hand the ball off to Silas Spearman, and again, running into the Marshall D, Arnold Blackman makes the tackle. That's at that defensive end position. They're missing Jeremiah Taylor, and they've got some other players. A lot of times in these zone blocking schemes where no, everybody just kind of goes to the right and just blocks an area, so third and 14 here. Hill here. Down he goes. Alex Bazzi chased him down, and another third down sack suffered by FIU. Bazzi and Rashad Myers both got in there. Ten yard loss. And you can see they try to cut Bazzi on the outside. With TJ Louder, the receiver, that's a bad matchup. You don't ever ask a receiver like that one-on-one -on -one to try to block a defensive end, but stay back with Schuler. They're going to be just as dynamic next year. 
And they're looking for Tommy Schuler, and he does tiptoe that sideline, stay in bounds, first down, 14 yards, and his first catch of the football game. And you don't want to wake up Tommy Schuler. No, and you saw them after Devon, Devon Smith dropped a couple balls. They went off on the sidelines. They had a conversation. He and Schuler did. And I think that conversation was, listen, man, I'm going to try to get you the football a little bit more. Cato to pass again. He's looking in Schuler's direction. To the outside, another completion of first down at the 30-yard line. He's picking on Justin Halley again. Shula was going to be, and he delivered the ball. This time they give it to S. Ray Talaferro, who has another first down. Dragged down by Markeith Russell, but 11 yards right up the gun for S. Ray Talaferro. And you can actually see it now. You can see it in the, in the Marshall players, the sense of urgency they've, they've developed, this rhythm. Across the 30-yard line to the 32, Caldwell spins, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Darrell Roberts, the cornerback, coming up to make the stop. And it's another hurdle that he doesn't want to have to climb here. And he had nowhere to go. Three players came in. James Rouse led the party that takes down E.J. Hilliard. And there was a little bit of a delay there with Michael Montero as the center. I don't think that he snapped the ball when he was supposed to. It's not pretty, but it's effective. I'm going to say the same thing about his beard. Not pretty, but effective. So they toss this one out to Stewart. Butler, who's still on his feet, out into the open field. Butler in a foot race to the end zone touchdown. 72 yards for Stewart Butler. Behind Telefair and Grooms, but check this out. Look at the blocks and then look him just get upfield. It's the speed at which he can get up the field, pick his feet up, put him back down. Rakeem Cato to key the end man on the line of scrimmage. Once he sees a hat for a hat, just like they've got there, it's an easy de decision to hand the ball off. And then from there, Stuart Butler just does the rest. Poor tackling by FIU. Hillier gets the ball out quickly to the far side, and it is complete but shy of the first down. Caught by Joaquin Greiner, but Taj Letman all over him on the sideline. You know, I'm not really sure about that call. You've got a third down situation, and you don't even have a route. And the same thing with Cato and Cardin as they throw to Tommy Schuler, complete for a first down, out of bounds shy of the 30-yard line. Hilliard, 6 for 12 for 71 yards, and he throws into coverage, it's intercepted! Darrell Roberts wrestled down at the 35. Second interception of the season for Roberts, who plays for Marshall, but he's from Lakeland, Florida. And this time, they go man-to-man -man situation. And it's a, just a quick slant to Dominique Rimes. Defender does a great job of sticking his left hand in there and knocking the ball up in the air. The old tip drill, and he tipped it to himself. Great job by Daryl Roberts and this team. Mixing things up, playing some zone coverage, and they come back to man and it pays off for him. Cato, quick throw to Gator Hoskins down the sideline, and look at him go. Justin Halley, the unfortunate recipient, trying to tackle Gator Hoskins. That did not work out so well. I'm going to make an excuse here for Justin. I'm thinking that he thinks that Gators is going to step out of bounds, conserve a little bit of this clock. But unbeknownst to him, Gator has other plans and just lowers his shoulder and trucks him. Those are your go-to guys. And they go to Talaferro right up the middle, and he's fighting for that last yard. Did he get it? It looks like he may have gotten the first down. They'll give him 11 in the first down. And so 20 seconds to go. This is the ninth play of the drive. Cato with time to Schuler with a path to the end zone. Touchdown, thundering her. 21 yards, pitch and catch from Rakeem Cato to Tommy Schuler, his ninth touchdown grab of the season. So they actually picks the defender that was covering
Tommy Schuler, and that enabled him to come back beyond. FIU was playing really well, and then everything started to reverse. We see Gator Hoskins tough to cover in the red zone for anybody, and Markeith Miller, the linebacker, had tough assignment trying to cover him man to man. And then on the read option, Stuart Butler breaks a couple tackles, and then he shows off his speed as he breaks through the open field on an 80-yard touchdown run for Marshall. And then to close out the first half, a little pick route on the outside by Gator Hoskins opens up Tommy Schuler. Easy pitch and catch for Rakeem Cato. And Marshall right now has really taken command of this game. This will be a much better team next year. We open up the second half here in Miami. And it's DeAndre Reeves from the goal line. Across the 25 to the 35 almost, and he was ripped out of bounds. It was a 53-yard punt that sets Hilliard up deep in his own end as they give it to Lamar Caldwell. And he is stuffed right away. Jermaine Holmes, the middle linebacker, making the tackle. And a true freshman who started every game for FIU. And off to Caldwell, snuffed out by Alex Bazzi again. Third and nine for Hilliard and the Panthers here on their first possession of the second half. Hilliard with time. And now that window's closing and down he goes. Vertically in his face. So you got the guys coming on the edges, which is going to force him up into the pocket. But guys like James Rouse getting up in there to take away that run lane. CollegeSports.com. From the 45, it is Cato looking over the middle to Hoskins. He holds it in with one hand. Hoskins down inside the 15-yard line. 40 yards to the tight end, Gator Hoskins, before Davis and Coleman could bring him down. I mean, you would talk about how tough it is. You see him right here. He's lined up against a defensive back. You see how tough it is. They get a jam on him. There's a little slight confusion about, uh, was I supposed to cover that guy? Yeah, you're supposed to cover that guy. And the guy happens to be G Gator Hoskins, and he's a legit player that can get down the field, never mind the fact that he's 245 pounds. The guy can move, and you can see his hands. Tremendous athlete. Injured on the play for Florida International, Denzel. And it sets up first and 10 from the 15th. And I wouldn't be surprised if they go right back to him. This is his bread and butter. This is where he specializes in catching touchdowns right here in the red zone. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just go ahead and say, hey, you've got the hot hand. You've got us all the way down here. We'll go ahead and give you the touchdown. Four catches, 81 yards so far for Gator Hoskins, who, yes, he's from Gainesville, Florida. Gator, he's a nickname, but a pretty good one. They're looking for him again. Touchdown, Hoskins. Marshall adds six four, and Gator Hoskins, two touchdowns tonight, now has 11 on the season. And the game is to Satterfield Row. And he gets driven backwards by Jermaine Holmes. On first down, Hillier gets away somehow for the moment and then is dragged down by Rashad Myers. Corey Tyndall came first. Keep bringing the pressure backside of Hilliard. Play action pass, but Tyndall does a good job of just beating the left tackle with his speed. And I gotta give credit to Hilliard for getting out of the initial. The first three were all on third down. Saddlefield Rowe is tripped up. A nice arm tackle by Jermaine Holmes. And there you see the jawing between the two sides. And watch this. Once again, they're keying off this puller, and he's just going to hit that open gap. Once that guard pulls, boom. Understands that it's going to be power. He understands where he's supposed to fit. They're going to have to play much cleaner football to have a chance to beat ECU. Here's a chance for Cato. He's going to duck it, slips through, and slides down, then took a hit there at the end, and there's the flag. <laughs> yeah. But he says that... Craig Wilkins came and watched them play while he was in high school and says, hey, why don't you come to Marshall with us? S. Ray Talaferro had the football and got popped, and it looked like well, they just don't want to stop playing. But Talaferro lost the football or stayed on his feet. 
and just kept on moving and after all that no flags at the end of that play we can see what happens on the read option the defensive end who's supposed to crash down that's the guy that they're reading he's late getting down into that a gap and it was an easy handoff and decision for rakeem cato and telefero driving his legs kind of a small bodied guy is able to get through there quick, pretty quickly for a big game and they did say he wasn't down that first time so it is a 23 yard pickup gator hoskins touchdown he's done it again 32 yards for gator hoskins already a career night in terms of receiving yards that's his third touchdown today and being put on that semifinals list for the John Mackey Award, which is the award for best tight end in the country, he's making a case to be on top of that list. It doesn't matter if you're playing man, you're playing zone. He's just going to outbeat everybody. And he's got the body awareness, what they've been through together. I mean, they, they truly are brothers. And that's that would be a hard relationship to break up if Rakeem ended up here and Schuler still went to, to Marshall. Hilliard, down he goes again. The final play of the third quarter results in Corey Tindall, the nickelback, coming up and getting the sack of four-yard loss. A lot of talk about Cato and Schuler, but tonight is Gators night. Gator Hoskins, a career high in terms of receiving yards. How about a career high with three touchdown catches tonight as Marshall up big at the end of three. Time of possession tilted in FIU's favor. And this is an improvised play for Hilliard, and he's got nowhere to go. Tommy Schuler's night may be done. His team up 34-3 over FIU, but Leslie McCaslin is not done. She's down on the sidelines. Leslie? Well, as we mentioned, a lot of Marshall fans in the area tonight because so many of them are from Florida. That includes Tommy Schuler's dad, Thomas Schuler. We have talked so much about the unique relationship between your son and Rakeem Cato. What has that been like seeing them grow up, play football together? It's been great, you know, seeing the connection and, and uh, the chemistry they have together. It's truly awesome. Well, he actually started out as a quarterback, you told me, and moved to wide receiver. Kind of give us that story so that him and Cato could then team up for the rest of their careers. Yeah, of course. Um, he started, but then he figured that Cato would be the best quarterback at the position, and he moved to wide receiver, and he's been loving it ever since. Yeah, they've worked out, worked it out on the field ever since. What has it been like for you as a father to watch both of them? I know how special Cato is to your family as well. Oh, I've been um, elated, you know, just to see both of them play well together and, and to go to the next level is truly awesome. All right, thanks so much. Thank you. The team only has five rushing touchdowns on the season. Silas Spearman has four of them. And this time, he can't break away. And then Davis on the, on the defensive side, he's had a, a big time impact as well. So you can see, they've got a lot of guys, a lot of bright futures, a lot of young guys. This program is going to look good here in a few, a few years. DeAndre Reeves out to the 45. And making the kicker, Austin Taylor, look foolish in the process. On a nice return of 44 yards for DeAndre Reeves. It's the keeper again for Fronapple. The big guy right down the middle and look at him go. Touchdown, Marshall. 45-yard run by Blake Fronapple. And I thought this play was dead to rights. Right off the snap, there was penetration right in his face. Nifty footwork to get around it. And then finds the open hole. Watch this. Sebastian Johansson just gets rocked right back into his lap, but he does a good job of getting around the trash and getting upfield. 40 yards in the fourth quarter for Spearman. Only at three earlier in the game. And this one almost intercepted. Pretty good chance there for Kevin Anderson, or excuse me, Raheem Waiters to pick that one off. When you run this seven route like he's doing from that tight end position, you have to sell it to the inside, much like we saw Hoskins on that touchdown. Getting late here in the fourth quarter. Hillier, pressure coming, and he cannot get away. Cortez Carter with the sack. It just takes too long to develop. It's exactly where he was looking with the football. He saw it, he saw it, he saw it. 
It just took too long to develop, and that rush got there to him. But a Rice win, and nothing else matters. Blake Fronapple, he's just going to keep on running the ball. He's across midfield, down to the 45. They didn't learn on his 45-yard touchdown run. They let him go for 27 on the next play from scrimmage. And I think they were confused on who had the ball. He sells it well. He sold this read option really well. You see the defensive end crashing down. And guys were just confused because he sold it so well, and the running back sold it as You got to have a running back that can sell it. Blake Fronapple using those long legs, 6-6. Six, six. So it, it all boils down in every conference and every situation. These two guys next week. Hey, he can throw the ball, too. How about that grab for a touchdown? Who said he's not a quarterback? <laughs> What a catch, 40 yards to Justin Hunt for the touchdown. Did you see that placement? Wow. And you're telling me that he's not a quarterback. Read option, play action again. Drawing up the single coverage on the outside. He sees that the leverage is on the inside, so I'll just go ahead and put it on the outside shoulder of the receiver, the only place that he can make a play. How about the true freshman, Justin Hunt? Take a look at this grab. Look at the placement and look at the concentration. He didn't have to throw the ball to get fired up about a touchdown. Rakeem Cato happy to. He'll hand it off to DeAndre Jasper. Typically lines up as a wide receiver, but he's gotten back-to-back -back rushes here. <laughs> they might be able to go to a bowl. Louisiana Tech as well as a chance to go bowling too, as this is Jasper again on third down. Elliott will run this one all the way down and then hand it off to Jasper. One final stop made by Cortez Carter and a turnover on downs. But it won't matter. The time runs out and Marshall comes in to Miami, takes care of business against Florida International and sets up the big game next week against East Carolina. I think there's a little confusion on the field because the change of possession would stop the clock at about four or five seconds. I think they probably disagree that the game is over.